Hello and uh, welcome to this week's episode of the Good Ram Show with me, Chris Goodram. Um, firstly, before we start, I, I have some um, some rather sad news. Um, on uh, on uh, on Friday, just gone, uh, we we had to say goodbye to uh, to, to Barbie. Um, she'd been losing weight for uh, a couple of months now, and uh, we had some tests run, and um, essentially it was just basically uh, time had uh, had caught up with the little pussy cat. And um, so, uh, so unfortunately, there'll be no more, no more sort of cat jumping in the lap, and no more um, uh, pitch invasions. And um, yeah, so uh, it's, it's yeah, really quite sad. So today's episode of the show is um, is is uh, the, the Barbie Memorial episode of the show. I'm sure she would uh, she would uh, enjoy uh, this week's episode of the show, or what I'm tasting on this week's episode of the show. So. Um, so yeah, um, probably not much uh, else to say apart from um, let's start the show. Right. Okay. So um, firstly, before again, before I start the show, uh, I have uh, a couple of apologies. The first apology is to to Tomatin. Um, last week I was a little bit um, dismissive of the, the the packaging or what appeared to be the packaging of the the decades too. Now, since I've withdrawn some stock from Bond, it turns out that in actual fact it is quite a sort of a solid uh, card box with a fold out bit similar to the original decades bottling so um i just want to say sorry to to tomatin for uh making an assumption because <laughs> you know what happens when you make assumptions um you get it wrong and the second apology is that on social media i may well have basically well i have i did say in actual fact that this week i was going to be doing um the first of two episodes on the new releases from north star and um Obviously, as you can see from the title page, that isn't happening. And uh, the reason that isn't happening is basically because Ian has asked me not to do anything until they've uh, officially had their launch. Um, I don't know when that is going to be. I'm assuming a couple of weeks' time. Um, so as soon as uh, North Star have done things officially, uh, then I can um, I can uh, do my review. So until then, um, I had to think well what am I going to do today um and uh, I thought it was a good time to do, do to take a look at some rum had some new samples come my way um certainly from Foursquare and uh, as you can see the the uh, from Sang Som and um so I thought yeah let's let's do an episode of the show on rum um so basically yeah with the exception obviously of the RL Seals 10 year old that's been knocking around for quite uh, quite some time all of these uh all these bottlings are relatively new, um, and um, so we're looking at uh, looking at several. Uh, I'm going to look at uh, the Sang Som Distillery in Thailand. Now, Sang Som is owned by Inverhouse Distillers uh, that own um, Agnok and um, Pulteney and what have you. And they've not really done anything with it, to, to be fair. I mean, the thing is about um, the a Asian. Um, continent and you know india and all that they they produce as you well know an awful lot of distilled alcohol now i use the term distilled alcohol because the majority of it is actually from uh a molasses based and it's primarily for the the local market um i mean they call it whiskey but of course obviously it's not i think in some cases they actually physically blend the stuff with scotch whiskey and um you know it it never comes over this country because the the, the swa would certainly uh, not be uh, happy about that should we say so you know it's it's essentially rum and um Suddenly, uh, obviously, in the house, have realised that the, the you know, over the last year or so, rum has had a, a bit of a renaissance. So they thought that they would, um, uh, you know, package up uh, the Sang Som rum and uh, get it over to the UK market. So um, I doubt many of you would have actually heard of the stuff. So uh, yeah, it just be an interesting thing to to look at. Um, and obviously, there's a couple of uh, new releases from um, uh, the, the from Richard Seal at uh, Foursquare, um, and um, obviously, I'll, 
introduce them when we come to the lineup and uh, uh, sort of just rounding it out sort of a new a new bottling from Mezan. Um, obviously you know that's the independent um, rum bottling company that's owned by Mauricio Beverages so a big thank you to Mauricio Beverages for the sample of the Maison and the seals uh, with the exception obviously of this one and uh, a big thank you to Wimberhouse Distillers for the samples of the uh, the prior uh, I believe that's how you pronounce it but lots of foreign words for me to get wrong Ooh. anyway um, so let's uh, let's just take a look at what, uh, what I'm going to be tasting <laughs> So we're going to kick off with the two uh, prior bottlings, the prior rums. Uh, like I said, Sang Som Distillery in Thailand, founded in 1977, so it's been going for quite some time. And we have two bottlings uh, for the UK market. The first one is called um, the Elements. Uh, it is made up of aged rums. They don't specify how aged they are. Uh, it's bottled at 40%, and it's not. And an exp uh, uh, not <laughs> it's not an expensive bottling, should we say? I, I think it retails at just over sort of like twenty four quid. Um, the second one we'll be looking at is what they call their uh, gold rum. This again is bottled at forty percent. It features uh, a blend of seven to twelve year old uh, rums. Now the interesting thing about um, the distillery is that uh, the, all the casks are allegedly, I'm not saying that they're not, um, uh, matured by lagoons. Now I'm not quite sure how that works out. Do they store them all in caves or have they built lagoons you know in the sort of warehouses? I honestly don't know. Um, but anyway it's uh, I'm guessing that it, that, uh, it will make the um, uh, the atmosphere fairly moist so it's probably offsetting the heat of the country I would imagine uh, to a certain extent so uh, and as you know sort of like you know uh, Thailand India and all those uh, that subcontinent is is pretty hot so you know your spirit is not going to hang around for an awful long time so uh, I'm assuming that the that aging it sort of by a, you know a body of water is going to sort of yeah, maybe have some interesting sort of uh, give some interesting twist to the, to the spirit itself but uh, obviously we shall see in due course third bottling I'll be looking at like I said is the new release from Mezan uh, and this is well I'm going to try and pronounce this word um, Shikiri uh, it's the Shikiri Moscatel cask finished Panama rum God, that's a mouthful, isn't it? Again, bottled at forty percent. Again, not a particularly expensive bottle. I think retailing somewhere in the region of thirty-three pounds. Uh, it's column still rum that has been aged in uh, ex bourbon and Moscatel casks. I think um, obviously finished in ex Moscatel casks. Now, uh, as it's from Panama, the only distillery I can think of that it probably comes from is Don Jose. Certainly, I know that the Panama rum in the uh, the Mezzan range, the vintage Panama rum, is um, from the Don Jose distillery. Uh, I don't think, yes, this doesn't have a, I don't think this has an age statement, certainly I've not got a note that it has an age statement. Um, hopefully it's not another another mistake. Um, no, doesn't say anything on the label. Um, so anyway, yeah, Don Jose, I mean the, the Don Jose bottling is absolutely fantastic. I mean the, the, the spirit that comes out of, uh, out of that distillery is, is pretty pretty impressive so um, I think this should be quite interesting. Next bottling we'll be looking at is the first of the three uh, four square bottlings. This is the RL Seals 10 year old. Now uh, as you probably well know um, uh, the distillery has both pot and column stills and uh, all of their bottlings generally speaking uh, tend to be a blend of the two types of stills uh, this the 10 year old uh, has um, spirit that's vatted before and after aging in uh, ex uh, bourbon casks with additional maturation in ex madeira and french oak ex brandy so yeah quite a lot of oak i know richard likes to play around with his oak and does some really innovative stuff with it um and um yeah i, I think the, the as you well know the rl seals again not a particularly expensive bottling on our website for just over 46 quid um and it always as far as i can remember has been you know very very good quality and then we're going to take a look at two of their brand new releases in their sort of well, 
I don't know what he calls the range to be bluntly honest with you, but limited edition bottlings I suppose for want of a better word. The first one we'll be looking at is called uh, Four Square Detente. Uh, this is a blend of 10 year old ex bourbon uh, matured spirit with a uh, four year old ex bourbon matured spirit which has spent a further six years in ex port casks. See what I mean about playing around with these casks? Uh, it's bottled at 51% and it retails for just a smidgen under 60 quid so um, hopefully that should be really really interesting and the last bottling we'll be looking at is the what now appears to be a yearly release of a car strength uh, this is the 2008 car strength bottling it's 12 years old and it is bottled at the not inconsiderable uh, ABV of 60 percent all aged in ex bourbon again a blend of pot and column still now it's quite interesting now because um, as you know most a lot of distilleries or rum distilleries that tend to use column still will produce quite a high ABV um, spirit um, more often than not in the the upper 70s and uh, I believe a lot of distilleries tend to sort of pretty much put into cask at roughly about that now I think Richard is slightly different in the he uh, puts into cask at sort of I think high 50s I think I think somewhere around about 58% uh, percent. and yet this is 60% so mm, what's going on here and one can only assume that the the, uh, the heat has caused so, that much evaporation in these casks that it has actually increased the ABV and I mean that's not unheard of it in America for example I mean, certainly the George T. Stagg tends to be selected uh, from casks that have uh, essentially done exactly that you know the, the ABV has increased because of the um, the evaporation of the water content so um, yeah 60% that's going to be a hell of a one to finish on, isn't it? So anyway, um, I think that's a, enough uh, enough yap. Um, let's uh, let's kick off with uh, some Taiwanese rum. Right. Okay. So uh, let's uh, kick off with the uh, the elements. Let's see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? Quite a bit of oak uh, straight off the bat. Uh, I'm getting sort of toffee, vanilla obvious American oak uh, character um, there's a little bit of, of, of dried rummy fruits it's got a sort of uh, a column still character to it I don't know for definite whether uh, the distillery uses column stills but certainly this nose would would imply that that is the case it's got that slightly sort of you know almost grainy kind of um, high, slightly high toned character um, it's it's pleasant it's not hugely complex it's pretty straightforward it's kind of um yeah i mean it's not an expensive bottle of rum at the end of the day um sort of pass on less oak influence on the palate so I'm getting a lot more um, spirit character in it. And, and to me it says column still um, it's got that sort of lightness that sort of um, slightly sort of crisp uh, dried fruit kind of character it's a little short it has to be said um, there's a little bitterness on the end but again you know it's not sort of overly bitter um, and it's, I think it's probably an ideal mixer, really, at the end of the day. I don't think it's quite got the complexity to sort of, um, I mean, well, you can drink that neat. I mean, obviously, you can drink it neat. But what I'm trying to say is I don't think it's kind of really got the complexity. It's a bit simple. Uh, it's a bit short. Um, but, you know, it's, it's you know, pleasantly made. And, you know, like a lot of young rums, I think that, you know, generally speaking uh and, and this is a real general generalization i should say that you know anything generally less than eight years of age doesn't tend to quite have that sort of level of complexity i mean there are obvious exceptions i guess um but generally in my experience anything sort of under eight years old is going to be sort of ideally used as a as a as a mixer and so yeah i think that that's pretty much uh what can be said for that 
Okay, so let's move on to the gold. This is a little bit more expensive. I think it's about $43.95. Uh, so like I said, it's uh, got older spirit in it. Let's see if, uh, if that shows on the nose. Yeah, that's, that's a more interesting nose. It's deeper. It's got an obvious mature element to it. It's got um, more molasses, dried fruit. It's denser, slightly richer. There's some pepper, cinnamon, almost a touch of violet as well, which is quite interesting. Um, I must admit, I don't, I don't know whether this aging by lagoons business has actually sort of really done anything at all to the the character of the spirit other than maybe like I said sort of you know keeping sort of excess um, evaporation at bay possibly um, I mean certainly I, I, I mean I'm fre guessing freshwater lagoons because I'm getting no saltiness or anything like that um, and you know um, there's a nice bit of toasty oak it's got some pleasant maturity yeah, I think it's probably worth what the price tag is. Again, it's not not the most complex rum that I've ever come across, but certainly it is pleasant. Yeah, saying that there is a, a little sort of almost saline element. I don't know whether I'm kind of imagining it or not, but a little bit of coffee as well. Yeah, pleasant nose. Let's see what the parts like. It's a bit lighter in actual fact. I was expecting again that sort of maturity that I got on the nose to kind of follow through in the palate, and it hasn't really happened. It's soft, it is a little bit deeper uh, and a little more complex than the um, the elements. Again, a little bitterness from the oak, and there's a little bit more oak noticeable, a little bit more vanilla. It's kind of quite soft. Um, um, it's a pleasant herbally kind of rancio going on. I am a little underwhelmed by the palate, it has to be said. I thought the nose was really quite interesting and and um, just, I just feel a little bit underwhelmed by by actual, the actual taste of it. That's not to say it's not a bad rum, um, it's just not quite there, I think, uh, as far as I can see. But it um, yeah, is what it is. Right, okay, so uh, let's move on to the shakiri. Uh, let's see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? It's young. Um, there's a lot of high-toned column steel notes. There's an almost kind of botanical edge to it. Um, the, the Madeira is, is pretty noticeable. Uh, it's giving you that sort of like slightly honeyed, slightly grapey kind of whininess to it. Um, it's a little bit of toffee. Again, pretty straightforward stuff. I mean, it's pleasant, um, but it is pretty much, you know, young column still rum and finishing cask in, in essence. But, you know, I, I, it's it's not, not, not too bad. It's certainly not got enough age on it to be sort of like you know a, a, a kind of like a real oh my god kind of uh, rum but you know it's 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 pleasant enough and you know 33 quid you, you could get an awful lot worse i think um see what that's like Well, it opens up with, with pretty much all the Moscatel cards to get that sort of grapey wininess, and then in comes a slightly herbal, a slightly botanical uh, column still spirit. And and that's pretty much about it, really. It kind of like, you know, it just sort of you know, meanders its way to the finish it, to a certain extent. It's, it's a very immediate, it's very sort of upfront. Um, and um, again, it's not, not bad. It's maybe that it would have been a bit better if they'd used slightly more mature rums uh, but then obviously up would have gone the price point but you know it's um 
it's not bad. Um, it's like I said, it's it it is what it is, I suppose. Again, maybe this is some sort, you know, a cocktail base. I mean, it seems to me that a lot of the sort of rum producers are really into their cocktails, um, and and literally every website, every piece of um, you know marketing stuff that comes out of rum distilleries will go on about how they make great whatever cocktails you know I mean and, and as you well know I'm not a cocktail person you know I mean I can understand why people like them but you know um, uh, it, it it just seems to me that the whole rum business is synonymous with with cocktails and and maybe sometimes that I don't, whether that clouds clouds the thinking of certain distilleries possibly um, who knows but I mean obviously there's 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 great rum out there um, and um, yeah it, Horses for courses, I say so. Right, okay, so let's move on to the RL Seals 10 year old. I must admit, I mean, I love the bottle. I mean, it is incredibly unique, looks really good on the shelf. Um, but of course, obviously, yeah, that's fair, you know, by the by, isn't it? It's what's in the glass account. And that's a lovely nose, that really is lovely. It's mellow, yet it's got a wonderful intensity. Uh, Citrus, tropical fruit, lime, touch of pineapple, papaya possibly. Um, I mean that's a lovely blend. It's got the sort of, you can feel the rich uh, pot still uh, spirit that forms the basis of this and, and the lighter elements from the, the, the column still are just sort of above it. You know, it is slightly floral. Um, there's a little bit of a a biscuitiness which I'm guessing is coming from the Madeira there's a there's a bit of, of wood spice bit of tight wood spice which I'm guessing again is probably the uh, the French oak um, but that is just an absolutely gorgeous nose it you know it's kind of it's just wonderfully mellow it is beautiful I mean it's not thumping you in the face with um, uh, you know, dried fruits and all that kind of stuff. It is really relaxed. It's mellow, um, and, and it you you need to explore the, the nose. I mean, it is just it's just absolutely fabulous. It's absolutely gorgeous. Let's see what the pass on. Again, full, elegant, delicate, beautifully put together. Again, you can taste the sort of the richer uh, pot still character at, at its core, and you have the sort of lighter dried fruits sort of like surrounding it. Um, it's got a lovely kind of subtropical kind of character. It's not a sort of like a, a huge tropical monster. Um, it's quite sort of like restrained, refined. It has an elegance. There's sort of, yeah, there is tropical fruit there. There is pineapple, apple, papaya, um, maybe a bit of peach as well. Um, and a touch of raisins, a little bit of oak, uh, a little bit of vanilla. There's a little bit of an almost whininess again. There's that sort of uh, slightly gritty tannin right at the finish. Um, it's really complex. It is absolutely gorgeous. It has wonderful progression um, and is, you know, just, just absolutely stunning. Just absolutely. Okay, so let's move on to the Detente. Let's, let's see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? Oh, mmm. That is dense. Pot still heavy, um, dried fruit, treacle, almost jammy sort of uh, black fruits, um, treacle, tar, oh, really toasty oak, slightly mentholated herbal note as well, touch of pecan, almond. I mean that is stunning. I mean that is that is frighteningly good. Um, it's just got so much character and there's so much going on. I mean, it's just a lovely combination of casks. Again, it's not sort of, you know, overwhelmed by any particular 
characteristic so it is just a a masterful blend of different cast types different spirits and, and this is the thing that's always intrigued me about rum as a whole is the fact that you know you have arguably a slightly broader palette to play with than than say whiskey because obviously you have um, the the option of the different types of still all that kind of stuff um, and you know some some distillers like Richard Seal are really kind of like you know pushing the envelope for want of a better word and really trying experiments and things like that. I'm sure there's stuff that he's he's done that he's probably gone mm, no that hasn't worked and it's just kind of like I'll just quietly get rid of that um, or maybe just kind of like well, we'll just leave it in the warehouse and just see what the hell happens to it um, anyway I mean the nose on this is just just stunning absolutely stunning silver pass on Mouth-filling. That is a big and juicy mouthful of, of dried fruit. Um, so again, slightly jammy black fruits, um, vanilla, treacle, molasses. Again, it feels more uh, weighty. There's a lot more. Um, or what feels like there's a lot more pot still character to this. I mean, there is a. A slight lightness, uh, a slight floral note kind of coming through, mainly on the aftertaste, on the finish. Um, there's a little bit of wood smoke, some black pepper. Um, again, quite nutty, you know, that sort of restrained um, sort of tropical fruit character. It's, it's just elegant, um, but intense. Um, and, oh, I mean, that is just, just stunningly good, it has to be said. <laughs> Right, and finally we're on to the 60% monster. Uh, the, uh, this is the car strength. Let's see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? Oh, oh, um, mmm, mmm. Oh, damn, that's bloody good. Um, slightly whiny. It's red fruits I'm getting. Um, treacle, wood smoke, charred oak, mentholated herbs. Again, more heavy pot still character um, touch of marzipan um, 60 percent I mean you know I would expect the sort of my nose to be sort of like you know um, getting very prickly but I mean oh that's dangerous that is dangerous um, I mean that is intense I mean it's stunning um, but you wouldn't have thought from smelling that that, that was 60%. The alcohol is just so well contained. Um, I mean, I can just keep sniffing this all day. It is a stunning nose. I mean, let's see what it sounds like. Wow, I mean, for 60%, I mean, that is actually dangerous and drinkable. I mean, yes, you can taste the um, alcohol on the finish. It does mask the finish a bit, but you'd expect that to be just sort of like, you know, oh, but, oh my God, that's incredible. Um, that is really well contained. I mean, again, it's luscious, it's juicy. Um, again, emphasis on the pot still character, the dried fruit, the molasses, uh, the oak, the toffee, the coffee, the um, marzipan. Um, it's really quite coffee, actually. I mean, the aftertaste has got that sort of lovely, co uh, you know, coffee character, uh, and a touch of burnt sugar. Um, it, it is just a sensational rum. It really is. I mean, that is just so much character. I mean, it's just sort of like you know, rum on steroids. I mean, it is big. But like I said, you know, and that is dangerous because <laughs> that alcohol is so well contained. I'm going to put a little drop of water with it now to see what uh, that does to it. Um, that should probably take quite a lot of water, I would have thought. Um, 
I actually emphasise the oak. I'm getting a lot more toasty, charred oak. It's also brought out a little bit more citrus notes as well. Maybe it's kind of just bringing out a little bit more of the column still character. Um, it's a little bit lighter now, a little bit more floral. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's all less... It, yeah, it seems to just be emphasising that, that the column still element um, and it's just sort of pushed down the sort of um, the, the pot still richness but I mean it's still still absolutely stunning I mean that's that's a hell of a nose let's see what parts like that Pretty much done the same to the palette. It's just sort of emphasising the oak a little bit more, knocking off that that the alcohol slightly does seem to have emphasised the tropical fruit. Um, not quite so spicy, but it's still quite woody. Um, it's got you know a dryness, but I mean that's probably again. Um, I mean that little drop of water probably didn't bring it much below fifty percent, I imagine. But um. Green banana um, and uh, sort of slightly green pineapple as well. Um, a little bit more pepper on the finish again. Uh, yeah, it's just kind of just dialed down the the the, um, the pot still character. The alcohol sort of slightly lessened. It's just you know allowed sort of a little bit more of that fruit character come through in the oak character. I mean that is just absolutely stunning. I mean. Uh, 50, 60 quid, 59.95. I mean, when I tasted that, I just thought, oh, I have to have a case of that. I mean, I've got to have some of that. It's got to be on the shelf. And, oh, you've really got to buy it if you love me wrong. Right, okay, so let's sum today's episode of the show up. Um, now, I mean, I really wanted to kind of like, obviously, uh, show you guys the, the the two four square bottlings um, and I was a little concerned about what I could put with them that wouldn't be blown away by you know how complex and how bloody good um, Richard Seals um, skill is and you know I maybe I've been a bit disingenuous to, to the other bottlings in in this this week's episode I don't know um, certainly you know the the um, the car strength stel stolen the show completely but um, you yeah. um, know the the two prior bottlings yeah I mean okay um, certainly I think of the two the gold was possibly the more interesting of the of the two but again um, the nose seemed to promise a lot more than what the palette really delivered, which was a little disappointing, it has to be said. Um, and it's not going to be the first spirit that I've tasted that has done likewise, it has to be said. Um, I've tasted numerous, numerous whiskies and, and other spirits that have, have kind of like, you know, had a, a great nose. And I think a, a lot of the time it, it's basically a, ga a case of, you know, um, a, a, a blender can't physically taste all of those spirits. I mean, otherwise they'd be completely sloshed by about lunchtime. So a lot of the time I'm guessing that the blender's works, you know, or the master distiller is working on nosing and sometimes the nose gives you a false impression of, of where the actual spirit is at. And I've, I've, like I said, I mean, I've tasted numerous bottlings over the years that have had that wonderful nose and maybe just not been quite there on the palate. Anyway, um, the uh, the, the Maison um, Shakiri, it is what it is at the end of the day. It's a bit of fun. Um, it's not particularly expensive. And I don't think you'd sort of be, you know, unimpressed by what it is. I mean, it's a little bit, I wouldn't quite say one-dimensional because it's, it's obviously, you know, pretty much... You you get what it what it is. You get the column still. You get the the the, uh, uh, the 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 Moscatel cask. It's it's pretty much pretty simple stuff. It has to be said. But you know it's a, it's a bit of fun at the end of the day. Um, and then then we get on to the RL seals, which is where we start to get some real complexity. Some you know 
real interest and it's just wonderfully mellow it's laid back it's just you know it's not sort of whacking you in the face unlike the, the, the car strength bowling but I mean even then there's there's, a, there's still a, a real elegance at work there um, the um, the detente again just I think just emphasizes how 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 good you know a blended distiller that Richard Seal is I mean you know I mean, I mean you don't need me to tell you that he's won numerous awards and and stuff like that you know and uh, there's probably more influential people than me has basically said how good he is and um you know and I met the guy you know I met the guy and he's he's a lovely guy as well you know um obviously is very intelligent knows about his stuff um and creates great rum at the end of the day you know and if you've never tasted a bottle of the four square car strength you really ought to get hold of one because you know it is a seriously damn good bottle of rum um and the detente is not too bad either you know and i just love the experimentation and the things that he's trying out you know because at the end of the day a lot of rum distilleries are kind of like you know they've got their range they do their thing um and that's fine. Maybe you get the odd single cast bottling or things like that, but there's not a lot, as far as I can see, uh, rum distilleries that are really sort of doing some interesting and experimentation. You know, uh, it does seem to be all fairly, fairly safe. Um, and you know, obviously Richard Seal is, is like I said, is, is certainly pushing the envelope. So. Um, that's this week's episode of the show in the bag. Um, I don't have any stock of the Detente as yet, but I certainly have stock of the Car Strength because, like I said, as soon as I tasted that, I thought I've got to have some of that. And you know what? You, you if you love your rum, you need a bottle of that in your life. That's all I can say. So. Um, Anyway, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this week's episode of the show. Like I said, this is the uh, the, the Barbie remote. Oh God, I can't even speak. The Barbie memorial episode of the show. I'm sure she would have uh, uh, have loved. Um, she would have loved the, uh, the the car strength. So anyway, um, here's to Barbie, and um, good afternoon and good ramming.